integrity of the multi-billion dollar fantasy sports industry called into question. We bring in right now Becker and Polyakov sports and gambling lawyer Daniel Wallach. Daniel, good to see you. Thanks so much for uh, joining the conversation. Good morning, Maria. Thank you for having me. Can you explain this, uh, how this can be considered as cheating? Uh, well, when the House has the edge, when, when, when uh, insiders uh, from both DraftKings and FanDuel play on each other's sites and have access uh, to, to player, I guess, to, to uh, player-owned uh, percentages, which are supposedly locked to the public and not revealed until after the game starts, it is rampant throughout both companies. You have insiders and executives playing on each other's sites, armed with inside information not available to the public. That's akin to insider trading. And it's rampant, and, 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 and this, this weekend's uh, disclosure has brought it to light. Uh, Daniel, do you think anything comes out of this? Because there's, there have been so many arguments, and even leading up to this, so many articles written trying to, to say that this is not gambling. Although, we should point out, these companies do not operate in five states. There's only one state in the Union, Montana, where th that, uh, fantasy sports are the explicitly banned. But I want to know, do you think that this opens the door for regulation or even banning of these sites? Well, it won't be banned uh, in, the, in both the short term and the long term. We're definitely <coughs> headed to regulation uh, by, by either uh, federal, our federal government or on a state-by-state -state basis. Uh, this is a large cry for regulation. This is an industry that cannot monitor itself, that cannot uh, you know, maintain controls over sensitive data. And the call for regulation began months ago. This is, in fact, gambling. It is legal in most of the states, but it is unregulated, and it operates without any interference or oversight by government. And because, because of that, problems like this are going to occur. And we do need regulation, and it's going to happen. Yeah, it's interesting, Jason. I don't know why you, you would think that this wouldn't need regulation and that, that this is not gaming. You know, I, I, yeah, I don't know if we should necessarily even have to define whether it's gambling. And I think we need to recognize that pretty much any time you have interaction of different participants putting money on the table mm -hmm. and putting money at risk, whether it's the equity markets, the fixed income markets, gambling, these fantasy football sites, somebody typically finds a way to get extra information or get some sort of advantage. Sure. You need to be yes. aware of the fact that people simply operate that way. There are always going to be people like that playing in your space, and you need to be vigilant against defending, about that, yeah. defending against that. Daniel, you agree with that? What, how does this play out? Well, you know, it, it's not a matter of just self-vigilance. We need accountability, we need enforcement, and we need regulation with real teeth. What happened this weekend underscores the serious integrity problems that could affect, infect the daily fantasy sports industry. They can't self-regulate. Uh, we need controls and we need safeguards in place. It's not simply about FanDuel and DraftKings, but we have many companies operating in the space. And, uh, and you can see problems like this materialize and surface again and again. And just like with the securities industry, uh, we're, and, and every other sector of the gambling industry, regulation is inevitable. Yeah, why would this be any different, right? Exactly. Yeah. So do you think the NFL is too close to these gambling websites, Daniel? A hundred percent. The NFL, the NBA, Major League Baseball, and the National Hockey League have a sizable investment in the success of the daily fantasy sports industry. FanDuel owns a 10 percent, I'm sorry, the NBA owns a 10 percent equity stake in FanDuel. Uh, Robert Kraft and numerous other owners uh, own pieces of either DraftKings or FanDuel, and it is gambling, and there's a giant hypocrisy surrounding this entire incestuous relationship between the professional sports leagues and the daily fantasy sports uh, you know, operators, because on the one hand, the leagues are opposing uh, single-game sports betting, uh, but on the other hand, supporting and actually right. investing in another form of sport. Right. Da Daniel, we just should point out, though, the reason that these sites aren't illegal today in 45 states, and that's where they operate, is because they say this is a game of skill. That is the central oh. argument. <laughs> that's non it, it, It's utter nonsense. All right. The, and there you have it. <laughs> there you have it. Daniel, thank you. Thank you for weighing in. We appreciate it. We'll see you soon, Daniel Wallach. We should note Fox Business parent company 21st Century Fox has an investment, as we told you, in DraftKings.